After yesterday's announcement of the Pine Grove WordPress plugin, the question I was asked over and over again was, how is this different from any other page builder? Put simply, Pine Grove is not a page builder. It's a fully featured visual custom block and theme builder. You see, a typical WordPress page builder is designed to let you lay out and design the elements on a page. More recently, they've started adding theme building features so you can define your global styles and page templates. The problem with page builders is that you're now locked into their ecosystem. If you or your clients want to make a content change to a page builder page, you have to load the whole builder. Now, instead of teaching your clients how to use WordPress, you have to teach them how to also use that page builder. You're also at the mercy of the page builder's product roadmap. It's not uncommon for releases to have breaking changes where you're now on the hook to spend hours figuring out what happened and how to fix it. When they add new features or change the interface, you also have to edit all your documentation or retrain your customers. And in the case of some page builders, they completely undermine the core way that WordPress systems were designed to work. PineGrow, on the other hand, is not meant to design single pages. It's designed to make custom blocks to use with the WordPress block editor or complete custom themes that control the entire look, feel, and behavior of your site. Blocks that you create inside PineGrow are packaged up into a single custom plugin that you activate and use just as if you were hand coding a block plugin. The same goes for themes. If you open your theme directory, you'll see a standard WordPress theme that can be installed, activated, or moved like any other. This means that working in PineGrow is going to take a bit of a mental shift and not everything is going to work the way that you're used to. It also means that you might need to learn a bit about the way that WordPress is designed to work on the back end, since PineGrow tries to stay as close as possible to WordPress standards. Let's quickly run through an example of a plugin project and a theme project inside PineGrow. Let's start by taking a look at how we create a block. I'm here inside of my test system, and you can see right now the only plugin I have loaded is the PineGrow Builder. Uh, and in this project, this is set up as a plugin, not a theme. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna export everything that we have set as a block. Uh, it's gonna export those as WordPress blocks. So I'm not gonna go through each of these and I'm not gonna talk about how we built all this stuff, um, but I do wanna just take a look at the anatomy of a block. So here uh, is where we have our block action defined. And this just talks about what the block's gonna be called, what, what its ID is, what the category is, all that kind of good stuff. Inside of there, we have the site link action assigned to this navbar uh, item. And then inside of there, we have a span that's gonna pull the site name. Down here, we have this smart menu, and that's gonna populate this guy right here with the WordPress menu items. And it's, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take the first item that's below that, and it's gonna use that as a template for every other navigation menu. Coming down a little bit more, uh, we have another block here, and this is gonna be for our main hero section. You can see it's called hero over here. And we have an image. This is gonna be an image attribute so that we can replace this image inside of the Gutenberg uh, builder. We've got a title that we can uh, change inside of Gutenberg and this description. And as a matter of fact, right now we have this set as a regular description. I'm gonna actually take this out and I'm gonna make this an inner content section. That way we can add any type of Gutenberg uh, content that we want inside here, not just text. Now I will save this and let's come over and let's take a look at our theme and plugin settings. Here we've got the project type defined as a plugin. We've got the plugin name and the slug. This is going to be the uh, folder name that the plugin is saved under inside of your WP content plugins folder, the version of the plugin and some export options. Uh, this is just saying, do we want to include a line saying generated with Pine Grow? And let's take a look at this. This is going to say edit more project settings. And this opens up the PHP file. The thing that we're mostly concerned about in here is making sure that this header contains all the right information that we want. So right now I have the author set to team Pine Grow. Uh, we've got our version in there. This gets automatically incremented every time we uh, export the plugin. We've got our plugin name, URLs, description, all that stuff. So I'm just gonna come here and say export the plugin. Now what that's done, you now see we have our Cody Cool Hair plugin. And inside this plugin, what it does is it registers all those blocks that we defined inside of the Pine Grove Builder. So I'm gonna activate this. And now when we come into a page, I can come down into the blocks. And here are the blocks that we created. So there's that header. Here's our hero, our counter. And I'm just gonna add all these guys and we'll say publish and view page. And now you can see that each of those blocks that we created now lives on this page. Of course, these blocks don't have content that we want. Uh, so let's come back in here and we'll edit the page and we'll just click on one of those blocks. This is our hero block and we can change this image. I can change this text. I can come in here and this is that inner block section that we created. 
and I'm just going to paste some lorem ipsum text in there. I can format that however I want. Then I'll come back down here, and in this one, and in this one we actually have a standalone block, and this is just a, a copy of the blocks that live inside of this bigger block. So I'm just going to delete this since I was willy-nilly adding things. And we can say 10 plus years of experience, 200 plus projects completed, 100 plus raving fans. And then clicking on this, I can come down here, I can change my button link. And then same thing, each of these blocks, I can come in, I can change the content, do whatever kind of editing that I need. When I update it, and view page, and there we have it. You'll also notice that right now I still have bricks set up as my main theme. So all this stuff that I'm doing still works when I'm using bricks. If I come in here and say edit with bricks, I get the blank page. Um, but as soon as I do add a post content section, it pulls in the information that I've entered inside of Gutenberg. So this is a bricks page that just has a part in there that's pulling in my Gutenberg post contents. Now we're going to do the same thing for themes. I'm back inside my WordPress dashboard and you can see that I have my bricks theme activated. I'll come over to Pine Grow and I'll fire up a theme project. I'm definitely not going to get into the details of what makes a theme inside of Pine Grow because that is a longer discussion, so I'll have to save that for another video. But we can take a look here on the page settings, and this is being exported as our index.php. If I take a look here, we've got blocks. And when we go to the tree view, we see that we have a bunch of blocks that are being exported here as well. If we come back over, we'll take a look at our theme settings. And now our project type is theme. We've got our theme name, that slug, same thing that we had before, the master page. And again, we'll talk about what these master pages are and how they all work, our version. We come into edit more project settings. This takes us down to the heading information that we need for our theme. I'm going to do export the theme. And this is going to write those files out to our WP content themes directory that we'll take a look at now. And here we are. So we see that we still have our active theme set to bricks. I'll just come over here to the Pine Grove Flags website, activate it. And now this is our main theme. I'm going to create a new home page for this, and I'll just call this Flex Home. We'll add the blocks that we created. And there we have it. Now we've got our home page with all of our components in it, and that's been exported as a theme. All I would need to do is come in here and change the home page from the normal home to our Flex Home visit site. And there it is. This is just a simple one page website, so it doesn't go into templates and all that good stuff. We're able to just create a single page, drop our blocks on it, and call it done. But in a future video, when I go over themes in a little bit more detail, we will create multiple page websites with different templates and menus and all that good stuff. I just wanted to show you the process in kind of its simplest form and what's going on behind the scenes today. Matter of fact, I'll just take this one step further. I've opened up an FTP connection to our website. And if we take a look in our plugins directory, we've got that Cody Cool Hair plugin. We'll drill down into there. And you can see that we've got all the regular files that we would have as if we created this by hand. Do the same thing, we'll come over to our themes directory, and here's our Flex website theme. And again, we've got our header and footer PHP files, our index PHP file. All of this is just regular PHP, HTML, CSS that you would normally have. Nothing fancy going on here at all. So if we really wanted to, we could just zip up this folder, move it to another website, install it there as a plugin or a theme, and then use it the same as we did here. So I hope that gave you some idea of what's going on behind the scenes with Pine Grove's WordPress plugin. I'm going to try to create more short videos like this, not necessarily to go in depth in details, but to give you an overview of what's happening. And then I'll get back to creating some more of the step-by-step -step in depth tutorials to give you a deep dive into how to do certain things. As always, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and leave a comment in the section below and let me know if you have any questions.